We read about this Brita thing, and some people told us it tastes a little better. It removes the heavy metals like lead and chromium, supposedly. It leaves a lot of the other stuff in. Not sure how that works, but uh, seems like pretty amazing technology. This is a, a different setup now than our Zero. The Brita, you have to actually rinse the filter off for about 15 seconds. Your first collection of water may have some residue and it might be a little gray so you dump it out and got to do this a couple times supposedly these things last a couple of months so we decided to give it a shot we ran water through it a couple of times and it comes out a lot faster than the zero water that was the first thing i noticed so it can't well it doesn't filter as much as the zero water filter is because it doesn't take it all the way down to zero it comes with a nice little filter life indicator i think it lasts two months once you reset it so we decided let's run this against zero water because zero water filters a lot slower it's a little more expensive but it takes everything all the dissolved solids out so all right so we started with a tds test of course brit is not going to be zero but it takes something out so it told us about 0.343 parts per million total dissolved solids so you know that's it's kind of high. I mean, depending on where you live, it could be higher or lower. Zero water um, came in at 0.004. It's a new filter. We had just changed it today, so it might have had some of the residual or the residue from the uh, Brita. Samsung came in kind of low. It came in lower than the Brita at 0.275 to 280 ppm. And the tap water, it's, it's about where it normally is, about 370 to 400. This time it came in about 372, 380, somewhere around there. So the next thing we did was the pH test. This was really surprising because you'll see this in a second. I don't want to spoil it for you. You'd think that the Brita would have a much higher or much more alkaline pH than the rest of them. But surprisingly, it was the lowest or most acidic. This was really weird. It came in 575 to about 6. I'd give you 6.25 at the top. These things aren't completely accurate. You're kind of gauging colors here. But surprising still how low it was. And what's really funny is these kind of graduated. I expected zero water because it takes everything out. I expected zero water to be extremely acidic. But guess what? It was actually higher. The I mean, it was more alkaline than the Brita water. Uh, it's clean, but the pH comes in as the most alkaline at... Well, it's about balanced at almost seven, 6.75 to seven, which is great. That's a great, that's a perfect test, exactly where it's supposed to be. And now we did a blind taste test. Again, extremely subjective, not completely scientific, but still it'll give you the gist of what water tastes the best. Now Felicia had no idea what she was drinking here. And I gave her the tap water second. Look at her face. See, the tap water tastes nasty, man. People say water doesn't have a taste, but I could definitely tell the difference. And what's funny is we've been drinking zero water for years. You think we would know the difference? But her preference was the Brita. She said the Brita tasted like clean water was, was her remarks. I did it after she did. And again, blindfolded, I had no idea what she was going to pull first. And she gave me the fridge water first. And the fridge water is not bad. I mean, none of this is really bad. You can definitely taste a more chlorine or chloramine, if you will, taste on the tap water. But uh, again, which was really strange and I was really surprised and this blew my mind is the one I preferred. I thought for sure I would know the zero water. Is it very, very particular about this? But believe it or not, I preferred the Brita over the zero water myself with the higher TDS and the, and the more acidic pH. It's really strange. Yeah, check it out. We like the Brita water. Hands down, it won.